there are five things that I learned about painting with glycerin. I wanted to paint this abstract gum leaf painting, so I got this old bottle of glycerin to help me extend the drying time. That is definitely one of the things that I confirmed. Glycerin does help extend the drying time of your paints. But there are four more things that I discovered along the way that were really interesting about glycerin and using it in your watercolour painting. So I'm going to show you how I painted this abstract gum leaf painting at the same time as talking to you about stuff that I learnt about using glycerin in your painting. It was really, really interesting. I start off there with my Meaden mop brush. I quite love the Meaden mop brush. Uh, it's kind of cheap and sometimes sheds a little, so I don't totally recommend it, but it's quite good. So the second thing that I discovered about using glycerin is that it is an absolute joy to paint with. It glides across your page. It's a bit like painting with oil, except it's not oil. It's totally washable with water, mixable with uh, water. And um, it does, however, glide across your page. It just became quite joyful to paint. I'm using beautiful quality watercolor paint, a uh, paper, and that does help, of course, with the gliding. My gray is made from ultramarine and lunar earth. Lunar earth from Daniel Smith adds a beautiful granulating quality. The green that I used is from Cobalt Enhancer Yellow Light. I think that makes rather a lovely gum leaf green, very easy to mix up. And the second thing that I learned about using glycerin are those uh, special effects that you can see where the um, glycerin is mixing with the paint in a particular way and it's mixing partly with the water as well because I'd spritzed the whole page with water. I've switched there to the best brush that I own in terms of mops and that's my Mahogany Kazam Neef mop size 4. I absolutely love that for wide brush strokes and you can see that it's got this when you use the belly of it it's really quite fat and it's capable of some thinner marks. The other brush that I tend to use a lot of is this black gold 311 size 00. The whole time with my brush strokes I'm trying, I'm pointing out there's special effects, I'm trying to emulate the gum leaf shape so I'm trying over and over to use single long leaf shapes where I use the tip, then the belly, tip, then the belly. This is my most disappointing brush purchase of 2022. I know it's 2023, but uh, it's uh, <laughs> so disappointing. It's a needle neef by Castanet, and who's the artist, Castanet, just recommending it, putting his name on it, and it's very disappointing. It does do basically what a rigger does, but costs three times the price, so I do not recommend this one at all. In fact, I'd like my money back on this one. It was a waste of money. And um, however, I am continuing to use it because I bought it and I like to get the value out of stuff that I've bought. I'm switching back there to my absolute favorite, my Neef Mop, my large one. That's a size four. Its belly is capable of those lovely fat strokes. mixing in more of that beautiful grey. I mix, I tend to mix all my own greys. I love knowing what's in them because if I want to shift to the blue side or the brown side, I can do that because I know what's in the mix. Couldn't help myself, had to add some more glycerin. So now I'm going to tell you about the downside in using glycerin on its own. Don't bother using glycerin on the second layer and especially don't bother using glycerin on its own. So that was the biggest thing that I learned. Uh, you'll see me on this second layer start to add the glycerin because boy it was just such fun. So I found myself adding more and more glycerin and I used it on its own and uh, that's a mistake too. It didn't dry. Uh, you don't get to see that at the end, I'm sorry to say, because I finished the video, thought the painting was done, a couple of days later I come back and uh, it's still wet on the page. That's another thing I learned about glycerin, you can, it's very safe, I'm adding it to my hand there and feeling it, love sticking my hand in stuff, and found that it's incredibly greasy so I couldn't touch any of my paint brushes, <laughs> I had to wash it off straight away, I grab tissues, I get it off my hand, it does not go into your skin, 
but it mixes instantly with water. So in order to put down the second layer, I respritz my palette. That's a Quilla palette. It's a really large ceramic palette that I absolutely adore. Best palette I ever had. Uh, I've got a video on how I put that together and how its purpose is specifically for understanding complementary colours. I'll put a link to that down below. I'm going back to my image over and over and over, thinking about those gum leaf shapes and trying on the second layer to, again, use my brush strokes in straight, simple layers. That brush I'm handling right now is a Dynasty Acrylic size 12. It's got a flat end on it that is brilliant for scraping. So later on, I put down some gum leaves and then I give them some stems um, to uh, with the flat end of that plastic leaf. More lovely gum leaves. I've got the glycerin on hand and I really didn't need to. I was making this painting an exercise all about using glycerin and it I should have stopped with just putting it in layer number one and I didn't. So all this glossiness you start to see here pretty much remained. Anything that was bound to the paint, like that one there, kind of dried. But later on, I'm enjoying the use of glycerin so much that I put it straight on. And at the time that I'm doing it, I'm like, whoa, that's so beautiful. It's like a gloss medium for watercolor. Not so, guys. <laughs> Definitely not so. It just sits on the surface and doesn't dry. So as I said, I had to get a tissue and wipe it off. But that was a couple of days later that I did that. Continuing now to emulate gum leaf shapes over and over, trying to just do single strokes and adding into it. This needle brush, I use a lot at this, at this stage of the painting to add in those really fine, lovely sticks that are all throughout the painting and I think it adds a lovely natural shape to it and kind of breaks up the gum leaf shapes that were starting to really dominate the, in the painting. Trying so hard at this point not to overwork the painting. Often when I'm really enjoying myself, that's the biggest risk that you that I have is that I start to have such a good time that I don't stop and I just keep going and going. But I don't think I made that mistake in this one. I do take time in a moment to evaluate how the painting is going and I realize a couple of things that it needs a pop of color, not just those two colors. So I go into a fabulous bright red. It's um, magenta and it's a really pinky magenta and it really helps add a lovely uh, pop of color. The little abstract marks that I'm making there were to break up the contrast of all the gum leaf shapes that are pointing downwards. And I wanted to tr create a uh, focal point. Uh, I wanted to create some shapes that were completely different to all the gum leaf shapes. And I think I did that there. And starting um, to add those reds though really helped. That's the scraper, so that's the other end of the Dynasty acrylic brush. And I go through and add a little bit of detail to those um, gum leaf shapes just by scraping out the middle of them. It's quite easy to do with uh, that brush. I really love that brush. I wish they had better um, brush ends. All the other, I use the other end of this one for is a flat brush. I don't have any other Dynasty acrylics that um, I use much. I'm really enjoying just gently adding some of that beautiful red and some fine marks. I've pretty much finished adding all the darks I'm looking at the painting in terms of have I got enough darks, have I got enough lights, have I got a variation in shape. It's an abstract painting so they're the sort of things that you can look for at the end of the abstract painting. Um, shape, have I got variation in shape, have I got variation in tone 
and I have enough variation in tone and shape so I'm coming near towards the end of the painting just deciding how uh, whether or not I'm nearly at the end I'm kind of glad that I'd stopped adding more gum leaf shapes because that's where a lot of the pleasure was. It didn't require much thinking because I was just stroking and stroking. Uh, and there I am coming right towards the end. So at the bottom I'm going to put a link to my Quiller palette uh, video if you're interested in that um, palette and finding what the best palette is you could possibly have then that one is absolutely brilliant. I really appreciate you tuning in guys. I would love you to give me a thumbs up if you got anything out of the video. Thanks so much for joining me. See you next time. Bye.